Hello everyone, welcome back to another edition of videos. Today I wanted to show you another of my classical games that I played on Lee Chess. Uh, this was part of the Lee Chess 45-45 minute league. And um, I'll be honest with you, there's not a whole lot to really talk about in this game. It wasn't a particularly exciting one. Um, but it was it was a game nonetheless. There was an interesting line that I played against him. And um, you know you, you guys might want to employ this against this particular setup that uh, White employs. So um, I've been looking at his games all day, my opponent's... Uh, uh, games and I noticed he played a lot of d4 and one of the systems that he seemed to struggle against was against the banker gambit so I'll just show you what that looks like so you get into this sort of type of Benoni type structure and then move b5 getting into the banker gambit really fun dynamic uh, gambit opening that black can get into and uh, really cause a stir in the game um, the problem is um, um, for the first move, my opponent played knight to f3, and it's it's very it's a very bit of a surprise to me. I, I didn't expect this move to come. So the retty, what what's it all about? Well, it's a very flexible move, and essentially white can go into a number of different setups. They can go into some sort of Catalan-like structure, uh, not pawn like this. Uh, they can also go for a king's uh, king's in the attack with stuff like this. Um, there's there's all kinds of stuff. They just go back to a normal d4 opening. They can go into a London if they want to as well, or a collie. Uh, there's uh, or a Zuckertort collie even, or a Benko. There's so many different ways the Reti can go. Uh, it makes it quite a difficult opening to to prepare against. And I think my advice here, when you see the Reti, um, just I think maybe try and just copycat, <laughs> which which is what I did. I just I just play the waiting move really in anything. So I just remain flexible myself. I haven't committed a pawn yet, because um, as soon as I can commit a pawn, then I know what the, the the my opponent knows what pawn structure he wants to get into. I mean, it doesn't make a huge difference to be honest with you, but um, I just don't want to commit just yet, just to see if he doesn't play anything too crazy in this position. So another way I do handle it is I normally go for e6, and if my opponent plays continues with d4 I like to actually go into a, uh, a stonewall dutch here as um, the, the reason why is normally in the stonewall dutch if the knight is is uh, developed on f3 uh, it's not its most ideal square ideally in the uh, stonewall dutch you normally like to develop the knight onto h3 and then sort of reroute it onto uh, uh, either sort of uh, f4 or maybe going into g5 and hit this uh, backwards pawn. So um, I, li I like this sort of setup against um, the, um, the the knight f3. So I normally try and play that, but the challenge is is white doesn't have to play um, with uh, d4 here. They can just continue with either sort of like you know weird setups like this and then try and invite you into a queen's gambit declined. Alternatively, they can also play e4. And um, this is a line I kind of fear a bit more because after d5, okay, we go into a French defense, but it's actually, it actually tends to transpose into a uh, exchange French, which I, I don't I don't really like playing on the black side all that much. Uh, it kind of puts me off um, chess in general, the uh, the French exchange on the uh, the black side. I don't mind playing with it as white. I actually quite enjoy it as white because you just get a nice easy game. Um, but as black, because you're playing for a move behind, you just, I always just feel like, you know, I need to try and prove something. <laughs> At least to try and need to try and complicate the game, and you just really can't in the exchange French. The the pawn structures are too symmetrical. You know, both both pieces, both sides are just developed normally. And I'll be honest, there's not really a whole lot of play to to go for. So. Um, so that was the thing I maybe was worried about and why I just decided to play knight to f6 first and just remain flexible, just see what, which way he would com uh, commit. And now uh, my opponent played, I guess, the second surprise, which was c4, and now we've gone into an, an English opening. So um, you don't see the English all too often, um, so I'll be honest with you, I haven't really got any great systems against it. Uh, I normally just play e6 followed by d5 and try and transpose into... Um, something a bit more familiar, like a uh, Queen's Gambit declined or sort of Catalan-like structure. Um, but uh, I guess I just decided, you know what, I, I just want to be a bit boring today, <laughs> um, which was a bit, which is uncharacteristic of me. And I just decided to go C5 and enter into symmetrical English. Um, I'll be honest with you, the symmetrical English is absolutely fine. You uh, it tends to be very, very drawish, um, but essentially you just copy what your opponent's doing and you just get into a middle game. Um, I can't see anything too much wrong with that. 
My opponent played g3, I played g6, bishop g2, bishop g7, knight to c3, knight to c6. And we've just essentially copied everything that white plays here. Um, and the reason we can get away with it in this particular opening is because there's not been any sort of pawn movements in the center. Uh, there's not a whole lot of conflict that's going to happen. So you can essentially get away with this sort of stuff until uh, potentially one of these pawns ends up moving. So an example line would be normally just castles and castles. And here white can actually do make the first break by going d4. Um, and I'll be honest, you, the lines are pretty drawish. There's not really a whole lot to this line. Um, you know, black just plays sensible moves, and he should do okay uh, against this particular open. So you know, just captures here is absolutely fine. Don't have to worry too much about the knight coming here. It looks menacing, but it's it's not really that mad. After this, queen takes d6. Um, black is in absolutely no trouble whatsoever here. He's got nice solid pawn structure. Uh, he's got a nice bishop on here, which is going down here. Just a few things that white black needs to be just careful of is obviously this bishop has got a lot of scope. So uh, at some point you might be looking to play moves like rook to b8 just to support the uh, pawn and then maybe develop the bishop. Or uh, things like uh, queen to c7, which defends the pawn as well. And uh, yeah, you just want to be a little bit careful of uh, some of the pawn advances down here from white. Um, you know, because now white's got this uh, three to two pawn majority that he'll be trying to to play with, and meanwhile you've you've got um, you know this nice pawn majority here against uh, his pawn majority. So you're going to play for a bit more central play, or he goes for a bit more flank play. Okay, so going back then, let's have a look. So what actually happened in the game? So uh, after this, my opponent played d3, which mm, is not not as um, as as ambitious as the as the move I was going to play. So I just went, okay, do you know what? I'll just copy him. <laughs> castles, castles. Um, we we're into a very unambitious play here. My opponent played a3, and um, you know this is the idea of rook to b1, and then starting to expand on the queen side. This is a typical plan in the English. And I just went to myself, oh, do you know what? I, I don't want any anything in this game. So I decided just to close down all the play with uh, a5. The problem with a5, and I think in retrospect um, is maybe probably the only issue with it, is now the knight has this nice square it can go to. And potentially there was a point in the game where my opponent could have used the square to really create a little bit of a harassment for me. Um, so I think maybe a6 is probably better. Afterwards rook to b1, rook to b8. I could just still copy him for a while here. And I, now I can't really copy him any longer. Although uh, b5 is playable. Oh uh, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> I think there's too many. Uh, oh yeah, this 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 knight. Yeah, okay, maybe maybe not, maybe not. So um, so b4 then just captures, captures. B5 can be played. You can take. You can take. Okay, it still remains uh, symmetrical in this position. Bishop d2, bishop d7. My gosh, you could just go like this forever. Full symmetry variation. <laughs> Essentially fighting against a mirror. My god. Um, normally mirror play doesn't work, but as I say, in this particular opening, it's probably the only opening where it does work, um, which is uh, it's quite interesting. But anyway, I just played a5, I just decided I'd close down all the pressure. He can't really play moves like b4 now as well, I just capture here, and he would love to recapture back, but of course his rook would uh, then fall. So uh, so then my opponent played uh, queen to c7, uh, c2, and I was, I was quite happy to see this move. You know, I just had this sort of idea now, getting my bishop to g4, then jumping my knight into uh, to d4 and creating uh, some pressure uh, along here. So maybe it captures here first, and then after bishop captures the knight in there. Um, but the only problem with this plan, I'd love to carry out this plan, but I've just got to worry about what to do with this b2 pawn. Um, there's some nasty little traps. I, I've fallen for them before, and I, you know, I don't want to uh, create any unnecessary problems for me. So I played queen to c7, so I just copied him. Um, now b3 was played. He wanted to get his other bishop onto this diagonal, and I decided to go g4 now. Now the bishop b2, quite happy to see this. I just captured here, and after bishop captures... I now jumped in with my knight. A slightly better variation here, maybe knights to b5 here. And I know it looks like he's giving up the bishop, but obviously this comes with its own threat. So I'd have to go, you know, queen to b6, and uh, then he can capture back. And he would love to. I would love to play this threat here now, but of course 
the uh, the pawn goes off and uh, you know this is still fine for me but I've got these double pawns and this pawn is a bit annoying for me as it now blocks the scope of my lovely bishop meanwhile his bishop is the one doing all the attacking here so it's something I want to maybe try and avoid in these sort of positions where I guess the microscopic um, differences will mean a whole lot so okay going back then so he, did, he didn't play that move which surprised me but instead he captured here and now I can jump in with my knight to d4 which now has this nasty fork so I thought I was in a really good position here the, the engine is only just so many maybe like still equal which I was surprised to, to see but after queen to d1 and I'll capture here on f3 so in this symmetrical position I actually still have, I have something to play for now um, I've got this double pawn which you know I can potentially do something with also white has got this backwards pawn so it looks as though I, I've got all the play here um, but you know unfortunately I didn't really capitalize on it too much so um, in any case the first thing I do I did queen to c6 to sort of hit this um, hit this pawn but also I wanted to maybe I think in my head I was looking at these thinking of getting it's kind of wincing a little bit um, in actual fact, they probably don't. This, this knight move doesn't really do anything. So, uh, in any case, uh, rook rook came to e1, so now hitting my pawn, so I now defended. Uh, rook to b1, so now he's defending his bishop. So there's no longer these potential um, maybe annoying jumps for for me here. Um, I played e6, so I now supports. Well, I, I basically stopped the knight from ever really coming to that d5 square, which some reason I was a little bit worried about but more so getting ready to play uh, d5 at some points and try and expand in the center um, so now my opponent played uh, knight to e4 and this is the critical point in the game so the white knight is really well placed here it's got a uh, fantastic scope um, so if if I but the problem is if I capture it which I'd love to do I now undouble his pawns and well, all of White's weaknesses has kind of then evaporated. So um, I don't know what I was thinking in my head. Um, for some reason, I kind of just went immediately. No, I've got to capture this because I was thinking about, oh God, there's this double threat now. Uh, I can't really play a queen back move. I've got to capture. In actual fact, I, I could have just played e5, and that blocks this this potential threat now. You see, and. Um, well, it makes it makes White's play a little bit trickier. So, you know, he's still got this uh, this pawn weakness. So maybe after a continuation like knight captures, bishop captures, um, I've uh, you know how, how how does I guess how does White make any breakthrough here? You know, he's, he'd love to play this. It can't really do that. If he could play this way, I suppose, but it gives me I guess that kind of gives me if I opens up my bishop, but. Okay, let's see how we go. So after maybe something like this, bishop c3, um, to sort of to help defend this uh, this pawn, um, d5. You know, I can create an isolated pawn here that I can go after. So now I've got a double pawn and an isolated pawn to go after. F4 to try and undouble things. I can move my bishop back to g7. So if I capture here, of course, um, I then lose my bishop. So I have to go back there. If F captures, Bishop captures, there'll be a few exchanges here. And as more and more pieces come off, um, my position starts to get a bit better because he's still got this isolated pawn. And isolated pawns, as you get further into an endgame, as more and more pieces come off, isolated pawns become very weak. And this particular one is a really weak one as, well, it's got no, it's not very far in the position. It's uh, only on D3, so I can I can really start sitting quite a lot of my pieces into uh, that square. Um, so again, another maybe a continuation, maybe queen to F3 to sort of hit this pawn. I could do rook to B8. And... Um, well, I, I think White's position's still fine here. I mean, it's he, he can still hold this quite comfortably, but it was at least something I could have played for and something I could have gone into to maybe play for an edge. But in any case, I, d I decided not to go that way. Um, and I, I just kind of, I, I think I played probably the real first mistake in the game, which was capturing here. And well, this just killed the game completely. We've got, after the bishop exchanges, We've got eight pawns on the board. I can actually, if I want to, totally kill the game here <laughs> by maybe playing with like e5. And there's just nothing, absolutely nothing. We've got um, virtually no pawn breaks. I can just literally hedgehog my pawns up. <laughs> and it just makes it really, really difficult to, to play for anything here. 
Um, okay, so what happened in the actual game? So uh, I played d5. I tried to make a break. Um, e takes, e takes. And I was very happy if he captured here because I can take care of isolated as born again. So kind of the thing I wanted to go to. It started to play uh, rook to uh, e2. So that was like, okay, great. So I can now play d4. I've just um, created a small space advantage. Got this pawn a bit further up the board now. It's the first pawn to cross the center of the board. And my opponent played uh, rook to e4, which yeah, I wasn't. I was quite happy to see. Uh, it kind of confused me a little bit. I wasn't too sure what the whole point was. Um, so I now just captured the rook, and I fully expected him just to take with his own rook. And you know, I think game would have been again still very even. But uh, here he decided to to take with uh, the pawn instead, which uh, really did confuse me. As now I've now got a passer. Okay, he's got his own passer here, but. Your mind's a little bit further advanced, and well, you know, I, I've got potential plans of just keep keep pushing that pawn. Um, although, you know, at the moment it's it's slightly isolated, so I'll, I'll need to find a way of um, of either uh, getting rid of some other pawns and I don't know, doing some stuff, and hopefully freeing his partner, um, or you know, doing stuff like that. But it, it didn't really, nothing really came of it in the end, to be honest with you. So, okay, so I played a4 here, so I tried to, um, I tried to basically create some more weaknesses for him. If he captures here, I'd have been absolutely happy with this, as now we've got three isolated pawns we can go after. So, uh, instead of that, he played a uh, queen to d3, which uh, stops my pawn, but also simultaneously defends uh, this square. And, uh, well, I think here I can still take here. I think this would have been still a bit better. After the move like this, I can, uh, I can go rook to a4, block the pawn. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm attacking this as well. And, well, this is something to play for. I mean, I, I guess, um, it's a bit, I mean, you could play a move like e5 here, I suppose. Um, but this pawn's not going to really go any further, um, because obviously this pawn defends it. I can maybe tuck my king safely in there. After maybe h4, I can do h5. And, well, I guess I'm, I'm playing for a slight edge here, I think. Um, I'm just looking at the what the engine is recommending here. In fact, e6 is the move it's telling me to play, which I think is interesting. So I've played e6 now. Well, surely I could just capture here. So I don't really see the point of that move, but... Um, what's what's wrong with this? Rook to e5. Okay, interesting. But hmm. I'm not too sure. I, I like the computer suggestion, but <laughs> but the computer is always right. So uh, okay. In any case, uh, yeah, this didn't fancy. I didn't fancy this. I decided to play this. And now I'm playing for a little bit of a trick here. If I if he doesn't do anything and I capture, he captures back and I win a pawn back. Um, but he doesn't fall for this. He plays f3 now to defend it. I tried f5 to try and at least create some complications, but now he goes for e5, and uh, this pawn is now running forward. Um, although it's going to have no no support really to try and uh, get into it. So okay, I played rook to e6. I thought I'd stop the the pawn from moving any foot further forward. F4 f4 was placed, so now this pawn is firmly anchored. And uh, well, I started just chopping things off. Um, we really haven't got anything for either of us. Okay, I've created some more isolated pawns, but it doesn't really, nothing really comes of it, to be honest with you. Uh, rook to b1, so now hitting my pawn, so I play b6, so this is now defended. Queen came to d3, and uh, I tried queen to a4 now, stopping the advance of this pawn and trying to move in a little bit further into his position. Um, but uh, rook to b5... I just decided to move my king a bit further, just get it maybe a little bit closer to the action. Queen to b3. And, uh, well, I just took off here. And, I mean, there was nothing really much better in this position. Um, so I just decided to take here. And, well, we're just in a totally drawn position now. You know, we've got, there's not really any good pawn breaks for either of us to go for. We've got six pawns each. Okay, he's got a couple of isolated pawns. He's got more pawn islands than me, but... Um, it's very difficult for either of us to make any progress here. Uh, the game continued, uh, king to e7. So I just moved my king over to the uh, b6 pawn. King came to d3. I tried. I just basically shuffled back and forth, and I was just offering him draws here. <laughs> just saying, no, there's nothing here. Uh, perhaps I, th th this is probably the only point in the game where I could have maybe played for something here. Um, 
I can maybe go to a8. The continuation is quite interesting actually. So go to a8, and after king to let's say d3, so it's just shuffling. I can now play. Um, what was the move I was looking at? Oh yeah, queen uh, rook to a4 now, and this is a little bit hard for white to play as he is in essentially a uh, almost a zugzwang here. So if he plays a move like h4, let's have a look at this first. I can just play a waiting move, and um, well, this is the problem for him. He has to move e6 now, and afterwards I can well pretty much round up this pawn so I can go back. Well, there's two ways I can do this. I could do rook to a6 now, defending this way, and after maybe king to c2, I can just slowly round up the pawn. Um, so that's that's quite an interesting little continuation that I maybe probably could have gone for and probably played for a bit of an edge here. Um, but that didn't happen in the actual game then. So what actually happened in the actual game? So I played uh, just just I played uh, g5. So I just thought maybe he might want to capture here, and I can um, you know break open the center. Uh, he decided just to play along there. I play g4, h4, and we just agreed to draw. There's not, there's nothing really in this position now. Um, there's only one pawn break available, which is here. But the problem for both of us is we, we've got to mind each other's pass pawns. Uh, if either of us move any of them, then we just end up taking the other ones. So there's, there's not really anything to play for in this sort of position. Um, so, yeah, a bit of a, a little bit of a disappointing game. I would have hoped it was going to be a bit more interesting, but. As, as I say, I was I, I, for some reason I didn't really feel like playing really ambi ambitiously at all in this game, so uh, that's why I sort of played the way I did. But it was still quite amusing to see how um, how the game can uh, get just into like a symmetrical position and be totally totally boring, <laughs> uh, and just shows you aware at the very least that you can play against the English. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Um, if you want to see more of this, obviously make sure you subscribe to my channel. Uh, and click the notification bell to get any notifications about future videos. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Take care. Bye.